Hello again. When I spoke the other day about the possibility that Europeans and Asians had somehow acquired genes which made them more intelligent than those whose origins were in Africa, some people commented here observing that I had provided no references for such a claim. This is a very fair point which I shall try to remedy this morning. I have listed the references in the description to this video and I shall mention these as I speak so that viewers can check my assertions and see that they are founded um, in peer-reviewed journals and books and so on. Fairly soon after they left Africa, our ancestors had sex with the Neanderthals who were living in the Middle East. They mated with the archaic humans living in what is now Israel, Jordan, Iraq and Turkey and produced offspring who were an interesting mix of Neanderthals and modern people. They forged north into the steppes in what is now Russia and the Ukraine and also east into Asia, mating with another human species whom they found there, the Denisovans. We know this because, of course, Neanderthal genes turn up in people living in Papua New Guinea. They arrived there soon after Homo sapiens left Africa and headed east. The only way those early modern humans could possibly have picked up any Neanderthal ancestry would be if they had interbred with Neanderthals living in the Middle East. It seems to be this interbreeding which was the making of modern humans at least those who left Africa. Those who remained stagnated, but wonderful things began to happen once those extra genes from the Neanderthals and Denisovans were added to the genome of Homo sapiens. We know that animals like the mule are thought to be hardier, healthier, and even more intelligent than either of the parent species, horse or donkey. But mules are not, of course, a new species. Although there have been reported cases of fertility among them, this is not common enough to allow a breeding group of mules to become established. The case must have been different for Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. Matters are not made any easier when thinking about the possible consequences of modern humans producing young with Neanderthals and Denisovans by the indisputable fact that scientists are not yet agreed about whether those archaic human populations even constituted separate species at all. One thing seems certain though, and that is this, the offspring of the interbreeding between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals must have been fertile, or at least more likely to be fertile than mules. The very fact that all the people in the world today, other than some Africans, possess a percentage of Neanderthal DNA tells us that the interbreeding must have produced enough fertile offspring to affect us all. This, this whole subject of the possible levels of fertility among the offspring of modern humans and Neanderthals and Denisovans is a matter of the liveliest debate in professional circles at the time of I'm speaking now and it's possible that future archaeological or genetic discoveries will shed more light upon it. Let's think about some of the known genes which modern people have inherited from their Neanderthal ancestors. These range from pretty useful to potentially deadly. One gene we could have done without is one which is found more commonly in Asians and Native Americans than it is in Europeans. It increases the chance of developing type 2 diabetes. This gene might have been handy if you happened to be living through an ice age because it would help you survive periods of near starvation. In an era, though, with an improved climate, the development of agriculture and consequently unlimited quantities of sweet and fatty food available, it can lead to poor health and early death. Some of the Neanderthal DNA contributes to our immune systems and provides definite benefits. These benefits, though, also have a downside. The Neanderthals had evolved a resistance to certain pathogens, and clearly if modern humans were to flourish in Europe and West Asia, they would need immunity to common diseases. 
However, a more finely tuned immune system meant that sometimes it overreacted to harmless irritants, like pollen from flowers, which provoked the body into unnecessary countermeasures. Uh, Dannemann et al. 2017. This is where we um, acquire things like asthma and hay fever. Other Neanderthal genes have been found to help Tibetans living at high altitudes. Despite the fact that some of the useful genes which we have inherited from Neanderthals have been identified and their purposes understood, it still remains the case that, and I quote, a great deal of the surviving Neanderthal DNA remained a mystery. Papagiani and Morse, 2013. One thing about which there is no doubt at all is that modern humans living outside Africa inherited genes from the Neanderthals which related in some way to the structure and possible functioning of the brain. It is not clear precisely what role these genes play. One of the genes, microcephalin, is to be found in 70% of humans living outside Africa. The other, the ASPM gene, is present in just a quarter of those whose origins lie outside Africa. Taylor, 2009. Because both these genes have survived and been handed down for tens of thousands of years, it is asserted by some researchers that they must confer a positive benefit on those who inherit them. Evans, 2005. A study was conducted to see if the genes correlated to either skull size or general mental ability in various populations throughout the world, but no such connection was found. Rushton et al. 2007. There must surely be some advantage though, to possessing the two genes mentioned above. After all, 97% of the Neanderthal DNA which humans acquired in the distant past has been ditched long ago. Why should just a few of these genes linger on? Despite the failure to identify any increase in intelligence using standard methods of testing, there may still be an effect on the brains of those with microcephalin and ASPM genes. In Europe and America, there's a pronounced distaste for experiments which involve mixing human DNA with that of animals, particularly primates. In China, such squeamishness is unknown. As a matter of fact, there have for years been persistent rumours that Chinese scientists created in 1967 a human Z, that is to say a cross between a human and a chimpanzee. Lieber, 1985. It was reported in 2019 that almost a decade earlier, scientists in China had managed to insert the human microcephalin gene into some monkey embryos by means of a virus. Regalado, 2019. Although only five macaque monkeys were produced in the experiment, the results were apparently promising. Although the brains were no larger than usual, like human children, they actually took longer to develop. According to the scientists, these transgenic monkeys did better than average at memory tests involving colours and pictures. Such reports are intriguing, but there's virtually no chance of their being repeated in the West for ethical reasons. Although firm evidence is lacking, it seems entirely possible, likely even, that human intelligence is affected by genetic factors which some people whose origins are in Europe and Asia have acquired and which those in Africa missed out on entirely.